ladies, gentlemen, let the show begin. All right, do you like video games? And I know you do. What about entertainment? We got that to video game Armada video game video game Armada What's the name? Video game Armada This is the one drawing the gamer boss bronze And the first lady of Game of Thrones Media Blue Coming back to you with part four of episode one of the Game and Throne Experience from Iron from Ice. Where last left off, House Forester got its new lord, a uh, youngish young man who was trying to keep people happy and not in danger from their mortal enemies, the White Halls. White Halls? Yes. Oh. White Hills. White Hills? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And because he was throwing his really rotund weight around. Rotund. Fortunately, <laughs> fortunately, his mother showed up to help to ease things over and he peaced out. So, that's that. But now, we're heading to King's Landing to talk to the next daughter in the line and see what part she has to play in this. I don't know, but I know what part blue has to play in this Yay. by pressing the A button and getting started. Good maiden, she has Marjorie Tyrell's favor. Red Lady keep Marjorie's betrothal to the king may be enough to keep the Boltons at bay if it's presented to her as it should be. You do that. Very right, fine. I'm in control now because it involves manual labor. <laughs> Let's look in this box. What secrets is in this box? Uh, coins, unfinished letter. Let's see, what's this say? Look at. Let's look at, then we read. There's an order to things, after all. Father, much excitement here in King's Landing for the coming wedding. Lady Marjorie has proven to be quite popular throughout the city. I do wish you and Mother could come, although I know it would be impossible under the circumstances. I miss all of you, and I look forward to the day you can. Your, your niche coin. Does that sound familiar to you, Blue? Hmm. Asher sent me this coin to remember him. What a strange place, Essos. And this brooch. It was very kind of Lady Marjorie to give this to me. It once belonged to Lady Elena. And of course, the seal of her people. Ethan made this for me. Well, that's all that's in the hope chest. What else is in here? Book. Wonders made by man, by Lomas Longstrider. A gift from Roderick. I hope to see them all someday. What else? Coil Brazer. Eh, nothing in there, I see. Anything else around here? You always gotta search for all the nooks and crannies in Telltale games. Ah. You never know what could be what. Out of window. Oh, I remember what happened to the latest season of that one dude. I wonder if it's sunny at all. That's why they should invent screens to keep that from happening. Keep bugs out and keep people in. And that's all I gotta say about that. Oh, Letter. From Mummy. It troubles me to even ask this of you, but you must appeal to Lady Marjorie to intervene on our behalf. She is our best hope and can be a powerful ally, especially now when your family so desperately needs her help. Alright, you got that? Yeah, I got it. Okay, keep it in mind. Because now it's gonna get real. Real. One moment. 
Oh, sorry, milady. I, I didn't mean to disturb you. I can come back later if you'd like. No, it's fine. Come in. Watch him, girl. Watch him. Begging your pardon, milady, but you all right? If you don't mind my asking, you seem rather upset. I'm fine, thank you. Of course, my lady. Please hurry if you can. Lady Marjorie will be here any minute. Of course, my lady. You work for Lady Marjorie? I may be wrong, but it seems like you do. Perhaps you should come back later. Of course, my lady. Nosey won that one. <laughs> Looks just like her. Lady Marjorie, you're early. I was hoping there would be time for us to talk. Come, there's something we must discuss. Sounds just like her, too. It probably is her. Probably the voice is. actor, anyway. Mm -hmm. From the day you arrived in Highgarden, I've thought of you more as a friend than as my handmaiden. A dear friend, in fact. Thank you, my lady. And you know how I feel about what's happened to your family. I feel your pain as if it were my own. What you've suffered is beyond imagining. And your poor family as well. I need your help, my lady. Of course, and I will help you in any way I can. But there's another matter we must attend to first. You must understand there are limits to what I can say, especially here in King's Landing, now that I am to be queen. To have a handmaiden from the North whose family fought for Rob Stark. It raises questions at a time I can least afford. Cersei herself cornered me this morning outside the royal set. She mentioned the northern girl in my service, and she painted you a traitor. She was very pleased with herself. Her face was full of mirth as she said it. I'm not a traitor. Of course not. It's only an excuse to torment you, and by extension, me. She demands an audience. She wants an apology of some sort. For what, I don't know, but... She's waiting for us now, and I've promised I would bring you to her. I wouldn't ask this of you if it were not important. I cannot afford any conflict with Cersei with the wedding so near. I cannot apologize, my lady. I'm not a traitor. I know you're not. But you must find a way to appease her. Humor her. Tell her what she wants to hear. See if the Queen Regent is ready to receive us. You'll be fine. I know you will. You may feel one thing, but you must say another. Good luck. <laughs> wow. I know, right? You can do this. Who for it? Oh. <laughs> yeah, whenever we see those little cross layers, that means you have the ability to move. She left me. I know. She's a speedwalker. She sure is. Okay. Ah, Lady Marjorie. 
Aren't you looking lovely this evening? Lord Tyrion. Your Grace? With your permission, allow me to introduce Lady Mira of House Forrester. What will you do? What will you do? Well. <laughs> your Grace. Yeah, they're all big on bending the knee around here. Impressive. You may rise. House Forrester is a northern house loyal to the king. Are they? I beg your pardon, Your Grace. I wasn't talking to you. I want to hear from the girl. Is your family loyal to the king? Still a jerk all those years Perhaps ago. Perhaps you should ask the new Lord Forrester. He's not here, is he? She is. House Forrester's loyalty to the crown never wavers, Your Grace. I see. And yet. For centuries, the Foresters have been loyal bannermen to House Stark. A house of traitors. They are noble, <laughs> not traitors, Your Grace. Noble? Perhaps once. For a northern house. But now, now they're merely dead. Is your house willing to swear fealty to your new liege lord, <laughs> Roose Bolton? Roose Bolton also served the Starks, your grace. And proved his loyalty to the crown by bringing their house to a swift and sudden end. Old allegiances are not easily abandoned. But now that the war is over, we must look to rebuild and forge new alliances. There are ships and shields to be built, and Joffrey will need a steady supply of ironwood for his armies. I'm told there are others who would happily serve that purpose, but I trust we can rely on House Forrester. Forrester Ironwood does seem rather unique. To our mutual benefit, Your Grace. And at the pleasure of your king. It would be a shame to see it fall into the hands of another house. I imagine you'd do almost anything to prevent that from happening, wouldn't you? Ask any Lannister, and they'd do whatever was necessary to save Casterly Rock. It would be unfortunate to see another house lay claim to what's yours. There are limits, Your Grace. Perhaps, but not if your house faces potential ruin. What would you have the girl do, Cersei? It's not as if she fought beside the Starks, wielding a battle axe for the Northern Army. It raises an interesting question, I suppose. Can we truly blame those who end up on the wrong side of the war? Our dear Marjorie here was betrothed to Renly Baratheon on the false assumption that he would one day rule the Seven Kingdoms. Can we fault her for her mistake? Should she be held accountable? I won't judge her, Your Grace. I wasn't there. I didn't face her decisions. Aren't you a delightful girl? If only one could flit through life without ever holding an opinion of their own. If there's a point to this, I hope you find it quickly. Loyalty can be such a hard thing to define. This city alone is filled with all sorts of ambitious opportunists looking to reinvent themselves. Pretending to be something they're not. Who knows what lurks within their hearts? You are a girl from the North, here in service to Lady Marjorie. One can only assume her interests are yours. Yet loyalty to a king, that must be absolute, beyond question. And if your loyalties were to become conflicted between your king and the very person whom you serve, what would you do then? I'm sure she Let would- Let the girl answer the question. Go on. My loyalties would never conflict, Your Grace. That's a coward's answer. I will not have my time wasted by a northern girl who thinks she can play games. Who do you choose? All right, here we go. I must choose Marjorie, Your Grace. Clearly your handmaiden does not have her priorities straight. She is a threat to the crowd, isn't she? The most dangerous handmaiden in all of King's Landing. She's headstrong, isn't she? Not surprising, I suppose, for a northern girl. But not very encouraging, either. 
I'd like a word with you, if I may. Of course, Your Grace. I'll walk you out. This may come as a surprise, but I met your father once, at the tourney at Lannisport. Even then he didn't trust Ruse Bolton. We only spoke briefly, but your father struck me as an honorable man. You have my condolences for his loss. These would be trying times for your family, even under the best of circumstances. Forgive me for saying it, but the Boltons have no honor. Ruse Bolton has many unique qualities. Honor is not one of them. You were brave to declare your loyalty to Lady Marjorie. No doubt she was pleased, but Cersei, she will not soon forget what you said. It was quite the first impression. I, of course, found it all highly entertaining. But it certainly wasn't what Cersei was expecting. I did it for Lady Marjorie. As you should. And of course she has your best interests at heart. My sister and I have our differences. She takes great pleasure in her little charades. I take mine in thwarting them. We must find our amusements where we can. She threatened to give your ironwood to another house. It is the master of coin who decides such matters. The crown needs boats. Boats need wood. And I speak for the crown in this regard. Not her. I wouldn't want to anger Cersei. And you'd be wise not to. But... I suppose the Crown could be persuaded to secure Ironwood from House Forrester. Lady Marjorie might not look favorably on such an alliance. And it would infuriate Cersei. Although what would be amusing for me might prove rather dangerous for you and your house. Are you willing to risk that? It may be far too dangerous. Right. It's a risk I'm willing to take, Lord Tyrion. Please. You are a brave girl, aren't you? I'll consider it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I promised Sansa I would join her for dinner tonight. Three beautiful bottles of Dornish wine await my arrival. The mere thought of them makes me thirsty already. Thank you for the advice, Lord Tyrion. Just be careful. This is not the North. King's Landing can be a nest of vipers to the uninitiated. <laughs> well, that was pretty dramatic, wasn't it? Yes, quite. Honestly, I thought you were going to be uh, do it a little bit more differently. You were definitely more direct than I expected. The reason I felt that I had to be is because I felt that this whole gameplay with Cersei was a true test of my character. And I do believe that if I would have gone against Marjorie as she anticipated that I might, that that would leave Marjorie in a position to no longer provide me with help or trust. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that if I was the handmaiden to Marjorie, and Cersei's tested my allegiance to her, and I failed that test, then Cersei's would have no use for me, nor trust for me, or respect for me. <laughs> you know, that sounds very logical, but Game of Thrones isn't always about logic. It's about shock value, from well, what I can Well, Game tell. of Thrones in Cersei's mind is also about manipulation. And if she can say the things that she needs to say to get the information that she needs to get, and then she acts on it. So if she has a pawn that's nothing but a pawn, she quickly uses it and discards it. But if she has a pawn, it's something that she cannot anticipate, then she's a little bit more careful as to the next step she takes. If she has a pawn that works out of honor, then she realizes that she indeed must trust that person at their word. Now, how far that will go will depend on what Cersei wants from her. Hmm. Well, in which case, in this case, it will be the Ironwood. Exactly. And she realizes that this young lady is in a position to ensure her family will participate in gathering of the Ironwood. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Very interesting. But we're going to have to find out what these machinations lead next time 
at our next earliest video whenever I feel like doing these things. With blue, of course. With blue, of course. Are you, are you still it? having fun? Yeah, I'm still having fun. I hope you guys outside or out there are having fun too. So tune in again and check this out with Pete because I'm playing this along with you. Mm, you are deciding the fate of House Forster. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. But until that time, this is the one drawing the Gamer Boss Bronze. And... You know, the poor young lady here from House Forester trying to represent. <laughs> what, what? She's doing the represent hands. What, what, what? <laughs> Telling you to stay tuned for the next video game Armada transmission. Till then, though, take care. <laughs>